One of the things when we go into pregnancy that we start talking about from very early in the course of prenatal care is the plan for infant nutrition after delivery. And the focus here is, am I gonna bottle feed or am I gonna breastfeed? And breastfeeding is very important for the development of the infant. It's important for bonding between the mother and infant, but it also brings special challenges when we talk about autoimmune disease. For instance, some autoimmune disease may be more difficult to maintain good hydration throughout, especially if diarrhea is present or flares are present in those women. And so we focus on how to achieve successful lactation and breastfeeding. Breastfeeding can and should be considered strongly in women of autoimmune disease. And so it's a great option uh, for continuing. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends up to a year of breastfeeding after delivery. And we really don't modify that recommendation. What we do, however, is we look at what medications that person is on to make decisions about safety of medication use and lactation. When we look at the majority of our patients that are managed on TNF-alpha inhibitors, those inhibitors get transmitted to breast milk at very, very low concentrations, and in some cases even to levels that cannot be easily measured. There's not been effects shown that we can see that there are developmental differences in babies that were born to mothers with or without the use of immunologic agents, and we don't see any differences in their development. You know, when measuring, is my baby on time for developing and crawling and its activities and its pediatric care, so we don't see differences there. So we believe those are very safe options, and again, Autoimmune disease, just like we talked about, goes to sleep in many patients during pregnancy, at least half, but after pregnancy has, has um, ended and delivery has taken place, autoimmune, autoimmune disease does come back. And so one of the key things here is achieving and continuing remission in the postpartum period is also very, very important for mother and infant. Um, so one of our focuses is in finding those medications that are safe. Now, this is a good discussion that should be ideally had prior to holding the baby after delivery. And the reason for that, one of the, one of the greatest misconceptions and, and dissatisfiers amongst women is you have a care team that may have slightly changed after delivery. So for instance, you go to postpartum, the postpartum floor, you have new nurses, you have new individuals coming into your room to see you maybe on the morning after delivery and suddenly there may be confusing information. In other words, one person may come in and say, well, should you be breastfeeding based on your medications? And it's good to already have that information. In other words, we like to think about arming the person with as much information as they can have to know that safety before they get there, and then there's decisions being made. I'll give you an example of one that's often brought up is should I pump and dump? Should I pump milk and dump milk to get rid of uh, medications in breast milk? The answer is no. In biologics, anti-TNF-alpha agents, there's not a role for pumping and dumping in those cases. And so those women can breastfeed. This can be supported through lactation assistance. So a lactation specialist can assist with that. And they can also assist these patients in making decisions about medication use, as, along with maternal fetal medicine. This is one of the things that we address early in pregnancy. And the reason for that is because we know that women are more likely to be successful breastfeeders if they have been armed with this information, not at the time when we're making a decision, the baby is in our arms, but it was a plan that had taken place long before that had, had occurred. Now, one of the other things that you will see occur, and this is in normal pregnancy as well as women with autoimmune disease, which is milk supply. You know, can I make enough milk and, and am I going to have problems with making milk? Certainly, in inflammatory states and with flares, milk supply will go down. And so one of the key features there is keeping the person in remission, keeping well hydrated, and then also addressing nutrition again. So coming back to nutrition, you do need additional caloric intake to support the ability to lactate. There are some things that may be used in assisting keeping breast milk up. There is one medication, it's, it's kind of an herbal that is out there that is used in some cases to support lactation that we do not recommend using called fenugreek. Fenugreek can predispose people to additional bleeding, so if they were to have problems, like especially with bowel or autoimmune disease involving Crohn's or colitis, uh, that could potentially potentiate that effect of bleeding, and so we do avoid that. 
But otherwise, uh, green tea, good hydration, uh, bringing the baby to breast frequently can help support and keep lactation adequate throughout that time period so that such that breastfeeding can be just as if the disease process were not present. So this is a common question, like if my baby has been exposed to biologic agent throughout pregnancy and then after delivery, do I need to have concerns? Is there anything that different needs to be taken under consideration? Well, pediatrics will discuss this with patients, but immunizations may change slightly. There is one immunization that is given at under six months that is a live attenuated vaccine for rotavirus. And so if a person were to receive the rotavirus vaccine at two months and four months, that may be delayed. This is a vaccine to, pre to help prevent a certain type of diarrhea that may take place in infants. So that may be delayed slightly, even though the evidence from the best registries that we have going forward suggests that there is no impact on vaccination schedule or need for vaccination schedule to be changed based upon exposure to immunomodulators or biologic agents in pregnancy.